Good morning and welcome to the church at Ocean Park. I'm glad to be here this morning and we're celebrating in bog or in Bach, depending on it, the, the G or the C. <laughs> so glad that you all are here and we're going to start off with a song and there, you know, I, I love getting to learn new things. That's one of, I'm uh, Dr. Kim Harris and glad to be a part of this community and learning new things is something that happens almost every single week. So it's fantastic. So we're going to start off with a song by Linda Hirschhorn. And it is, the words are in the chat. If you don't know, circle round for freedom. Mm -hmm. Circle round for freedom. Circle round for peace. For all of us in prison, circle for release, circle for the planet, circle for each soul, for the children of our children. Keep the circle whole, circle round for freedom, circle round for peace, for all of us in prison, circle for release, circle for the planet. Circle for each soul, for the children of our children. Keep the circle whole. We'll do it one more time. Circle round for freedom. Circle round for peace. For all of us in prison, circle for release, circle for the planet, circle for each soul, for the children of our children, keep the circle whole. For the children of our children, keep the circle whole. For the children of our children, keep the circle whole. Welcome to the Church in Ocean Park. Wow, what a beautiful, beautiful song. Thank you so much, Dr. Kim. I am Akua TJ Robinson, and I am here to, again, welcome everyone to the church in Ocean Park. As I was thinking about welcoming, a verse came to mind that says, how good, how good and pleasant it is for God's people to dwell in unity. And I think about that when I think of church in Ocean Park, where everyone is welcome just as you are, just as God made you to be, and remembering that God has breathed life into us. So we are all divine. And in this time and in this moment and in this service, I invite everyone to clap, to sit, to rock, to have their tea and their coffee as we come together and have a one wonderful, wonderful experience as we also learn something new. So thank you for allowing me to do your welcome and I am looking forward to a wonderful time together. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, TJ, our friend TJ. I am Janet Gallery McKithen. I'm Janet Gallery McKithen and I am the minister here at the Church in Ocean Park and I also welcome you here. Uh, we come together this morning with heavy hearts once again. So we say no more, it happens again. One more and one more. The murders of Tyreen Nichols and Kenan Anderson may be 
sitting with us in our bodies this morning. The violence, especially toward black folks, is grown in the culture that we all live in. And there are still people even now who don't believe it could happen in their community. But until we realize that it is happening, we can't work together to change anything. The Church in Ocean Park, this community, your community, is involved in creating a more beloved world where black lives actually do matter. And black lives do matter here. We are working towards a better day, but this week is painful. Today, this morning, we are celebrating Imbolg, and we do need Imbolg. We need the goddess of healing, and we could use a fresh start. So welcome to Imbolg. Let's take a deep breath and blow it out. And massage yourself if you want to. Self-massage is always good when you have something in your body you're trying to get out. Massage other people if you have somebody available. Just take care of yourself because uh, when you continue to hold things like this in your body, it's not good for yourself. And ask for care when you need it. Feel the love for yourself today. Feel your greatness. We want to begin this morning by acknowledging that most of us are right now sitting on stolen land. In Santa Monica, the land was taken violently from the Quiche, the Chumash, and the Tongva peoples. We acknowledge the harms of genocide, forced assimilation, enslavement, and the destruction at the hands of U.S. colonial settlerism. We also acknowledge that our communities and our whole country was built on the backs of people who were stolen from Africa, placed into bondage, and forced into labor. We acknowledge <clears throat> that we benefit from that labor that has never been repaid. In our acknowledgement, let us commit to our, ourselves to healing by helping to create a more just and equitable world through the struggle of how changing how we do things that we see as normal, but that are actually systemically hurting people. We all have, have <clears throat> excuse me, we all have biases and it takes intentionality to build compassion for people whose lives are different from ours. We seek to work together across boundaries to tear down in unjust systems and build new relationships of healing and love. This morning, you'll hear from a variety of people. And if you hear something you disagree with, know that your voice is just as important as the person who just spoke. Thank you for being a part of this community this morning. Thank you for helping to break barriers and build more compassion. Thank you for being a part of bending the arc toward justice. Now we center ourselves each week with a chant by Thich Nhat Hanh. I have arrived, I am home, in, in the here and in the now three times. I have arrived, I am home, in the here and in the now. I have arrived, I am home, in the here and in the now. I have arrived, I am home, in the here and in the now. This morning, we have the great opportunity to hear from, to hear two poems, one from Bob Gordon, one from Trudy Goodman. Goodman. This poem is called The Peace of Wild Things. It's by Wendell Berry. When despair for the world grows in me, and I wake in the night at the least sound, in fear of what my life and my children's lives may be. I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water and I feel above me 
the day blind stars waiting with their light. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world and am free. Thank you, Bob, that's so lovely. The poem that I will read this morning is, I am running into a new year by Lucille Clifton. I am running into a new year and the old years blow back like a wind that I catch in my air, like strong fingers that all my old memories and it will be hard to let go of what I said to myself about myself when I was 16 and 26 and 36, even 36, but I'm running into a new year and I beg what I love and I leave to forgive me. Thank you so much, Trudy and Bob. That was lovely. Hi, everybody. Good morning. My name is Louise Dobbs. I'm Minister of Music here, and I have a song for you right now. And this one is called uh, When I Rise. And actually, it's from a quote by Wendell Berry, who I think we just heard a poem by from Bob. And um, it's called When I Rise. And I have the lyrics in the chat for you, so you can, you can sing along. When I rise.
I get the opportunity to introduce uh, our speaker who is known to many of us already because she has been a part of our community for a very long time. Ethel was, uh, Ethel Gallette was, grew up on the East Coast, but moved to Los Angeles for college and graduate school and resided in the West LA area until eight years ago. When she and her life partner, Rich Schur, who was here, moved to Portland, Oregon. Ethel has been a member of the church in Ocean Park for over 30 years and is still an active member despite the move. She and Rich have also become active members of the First Unitarian Church of Portland, where they both sing in the choir and where Ethel is on the Social Justice Council doing primarily anti-racism activism. I think they're probably also still dancing. For many years, Ethel led the celebrations of Imbolg for Church in Ocean Park, partially because it coincided with her birthday, giving her strong reasons to reflect and talk about starting fresh in a new year. Ethel is a retired educator and a former chair of the Church in Ocean Park's board, a communitas honoree, and one of the founding members of our Legacy Society, which means that she's named the Church in Ocean Park in her estate plans. She is a poet, an activist, a dancer, a singer, a linguist, a cancer survivor, a card player, a cat companion. We have a few of those on this screen. A me meditator, a hiker, a swimmer, and a lover of forests and wild coastlines. We are so grateful to Ethel for being here this morning. Thank you very much for coming back. It is such a pleasure to be here. <laughs> Thank you, Janet. Uh, can you hear me okay? All right. At this uh, midpoint of the dark half of the year, we celebrate the early signs of the spring to come and the feast of Brigid, the maiden goddess of spring, the goddess of fire and water, the year's midwife who births the sun. Imbolc is the time of the hearth fire and the thawing and stirring of the earth's waters. Bridget is also the patroness of poets, healers, and artisans. This festival holds the promise of the spark of creative potential, which is approaching from within the earth, our hearts, and our minds. Bridget is thought to work in the labyrinths far below the ground, and in the depths of our unconscious, nourishing and keeping the sacred fire by which the soul may rest and gain inspiration. I invite you to celebrate Imbolc as a life-affirming re renewal, a personal recharging, a relighting of the creative fires within us, a time of transformation, inspiration, and rededication. Now, Rachel, Joanne, Vivian, and Donia will call in the directions. O oh, great spirit of the north, invisible spirit of the air, and of the fresh, cool winds, your living breath animates all life. Yours is the power of clarity and strength power to hear hear power to hear the inner sounds to sweep out the old patterns and to bring change and challenge the ecstasy of movement and the dance we pray that we may be aligned with you so that your powers may flow through us and be expressed by us for the good of this pl planet earth and all living things on it. O oh, great spirit of the east, radiance of the rising sun, spirit of new beginning, power of life energy, vital spark, power to see far and imagine with boldness, power to purify our senses Hearts, our minds. We pray that we may be aligned with you so 
that your powers may flow through us and be expressed by us for the good of this planet Earth and all living beings upon it. O oh, great spirit of the West, spirit of the great waters, of rain, rivers, lakes, and springs, O oh, grandmother ocean, deep matrix, womb of all life, power to dissolve boundaries, to release holdings, power to taste and to feel, to cleanse and to heal, great blissful darkness of peace. We pray that we may be aligned with you so that your powers may flow through us and be expressed by us for the good of this planet earth and all living beings on it. O oh, great spirit of the South, protector of the fruitful land and of all green and growing things, the noble trees and grasses, grandmother earth, soul of nature, great power of the receptive of nurturance and endurance, power to grow and bring forth flowers of the field, fruits of the garden. We pray <clears throat> that we may be aligned with you so that your powers may flow through us and be expressed by us for the good of this planet earth and all living beings on it. Blessed be. Blessed be, thank you so much. The spirit of Imbolc includes starting fresh, freeing the soul to be inspired with the fire of the new spring. It is a time to clear out of our lives what is extraneous or detrimental, to make way for the new season so we can breathe deeply of the harmony of Earth's new life and rejoice in our own. As Bridget is the patroness of poetry, I want to start by sharing with you two more poems, another Wendell Berry poem to start, A Discipline. Turn toward the Holocaust. It approaches on every side. There is no other place to turn. Dawning in your veins is the light of the blast that will print your shadow on stone in a last antic of despair to survive you in the dark. Man has put his history to sleep in the engine of doom. It flies over his dreams in the night, a blazing cocoon. Oh, gaze into the fire and be consumed with man's despair and be still and wait. And then see the world go on with the patient work of seasons, embroidering birdsong upon itself as for a wedding, and feel your heart set out in the morning like a young traveler arguing the world from the kiss of a pretty girl. It is the time's discipline to think of the death of all living and yet live. And I'm going to read one of my poems written during the pandemic called Gratitude. When the world tilts into unredeemable loss, I try to love hard those worthy things that will not perish in the tide of forgetting. I praise and give thanks for the goodness at the heart of our hearts, for the persistence of the earthworm and the toad, for the steadfast light of the stars, for the blessings of the darkness, and also for the beauty of bare trees and the shards of broken dreams. Learning to be grateful even for loss is the pathway to the full-hearted laugh, to the living breath of peace, to the playground of the soul.
So I titled my talk for today, Reckoning and Recovery, Grief and Gratitude. Imbolc is about a fresh start, the old escaping into the new. This is a sacred journey. It's been five years since I last facilitated an Imbolc observance, eight years since I left to LA to live in the Pacific Northwest with my partner, Rich. I will turn 76 in a few days. Life is basically good and full for me. Fresh starts become a bit more complicated as we age, as people and as culture. And we feel the urgency to clear from our lives those things, those practices, those habits of body and mind, which do not serve our higher purposes. These Celtic rituals remind us that change is the only thing we can count on. Life keeps reminding us of that, no matter how much we see ourselves as stable. News of the world never lets us forget it. Sometimes we choose change, big change. Sometimes it is foisted upon us, like it or not. These last years have given us much to reckon with, much to feed our despair for the world. Just to name a few things we've dealt with. What the election and ongoing influence of Donald Trump has made us face about who we really are as a country. The police murders of George Floyd, Tyree Nichols, and so many others. The proliferation of mass shootings, the devastation of a global pandemic, and our truly inadequate response to it. The rising costs of the climate crisis, including the ever-growing multitudes of refugees. The January 6th insurrection and the fragility of our already far from perfect democracy. The gutting of Roe v. Wade. Unfortunately, I could go on. Those who are not on some level grieving are simply not awake. For myself, these years I'm sorry, have prompted a great deal of soul searching, of new learning, of humble awareness of the work I need to do ongoing to align myself actively inside and out with justice, healing, and liberation, with the patient but dedicated work of dismantling white supremacy thinking and culture. So many old habits of mind need to be reconsidered and left behind in order to move forward with higher purposes. The work of repair is deep and long. It will take many more seasons than I have left in my life to achieve what Unitarians call the beloved community. It is so easy to get discouraged, depleted, exhausted in the struggle to find hope enough to keep on making good trouble. There is constant need for recovery and resilience in order to carry on. You dear ones at Church in Ocean Park know that all too well in your recent and ongoing challenges. I do believe in the darkest moments, there is more than solace. There is wisdom and strength to be found in exercising gratitude. Joanna Macy said, gratitude is liberating. 
It is subversive. It helps us realize that we are sufficient and that realization frees us. Being in community with others, working for justice, repair, and peace is essential. I know you all have that at Church and Ocean Park. I consider myself so lucky to have found that kind of community in my church in Portland. Thank heaven we have been able to hold on to connection and do good work together through all these times, thanks to Zoom. Living here, I also take great lessons and inspiration from the natural world. Forests, rivers, ever-changing skies, wild oceans, volcanic mountains. The earth in its cycles always knows when it is time for rest, time for renewal and rebirth, and time to shine. In LA, I went to the ocean, occasionally the desert. Here, daily, I go to the trees. They never fail to lift me up and give me hope and courage. During the worst of the pandemic, I took refuge and at the same time felt less lonely in the great outdoors. This poem that I wrote then is called Pandemic Tree Worship. Isolation has helped me fall in love with the trees, has made me astonished at their courage and their strength, their acceptance and forgiveness, their solidity and gentle grace. There is this one rather ravaged tree that I visit every time I walk through the forest near my home. It spreads its trunk into a welcoming cradle that I embrace so it can rock me in the knowledge of endurance, in the comfort of aging, in the peace of being fully alive on the path. Thoreau said, in wildness is the preservation of the world. The earth itself, in the power of its seasons, of its truth, and of its beauty, despite what we do to it, helps us to hold on to some sense of hope for recovery, repair, and healing in our troubled world, both local and global. It also puts us in touch with our own ability to withstand loss to face defeat, to hold deep sadness, and yet to know beauty, to settle in with truth, to find a joy, to carry on. So this is a final poem for today, which I wrote while observing the devastation of long time logging practices in Oregon. Louise will follow it with a song. Recovering. These swaths of clear-cut hills interspersed with flourishing forest tell me the earth is always in recovery. All of us beings aching to replenish ourselves back into the wholeness we may have known in some past time. This human world likes to cut things down and away. The trees that block the view, the airy aspirations of the child, the flower too pretty for the bush, the inconvenient love that might have bloomed, the dream of a world without fear. Humans have been cutting themselves and the earth down to size ever since they grabbed the word dominion and made it more than promise, more than gift, more than need. Even so, the earth itself 
reminds us that beauty will find a way to live even after the demolishment. That rebirth is stronger than the ax. That grief and gratitude are the twin paths to resilience, to the fullness of healing, to a new field of grace. Ethel's my first writing teacher I had, and uh, I appreciate her for that. It was wonderful to, to write with her. This song that she brought us is called My Roots Go Down, and the lyrics are in the chat. Community sharing. Uh, we uh, this is a unique part of the church in Ocean Park, so you may not have heard of it before. But we have the opportunity. You have the opportunity to make a statement or to ask a question uh, briefly, because there. Uh, so we you can either raise your hand the way that Craig Ali just has done, where you go down to reactions and and click on raise your hand, or you can go like this, and we may or may not see you. We hope to see you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I like to say, Ethel, it is so good to see you. Good to see you. As well as be present to hear your voice and be in your presence again. Um, it's so refreshing to hear that strong spiritual sense and dedication. And I, I, I ask because you had mentioned essentially Donald Trump in that election, we are faced with, I guess you could say the condition or the state 
where not just arrogance, but total ignorance is involved in policy. Um, and being in Portland, I know um, that criticism from those who more or less hold that view have singled out one of the more progressive states as something to be targeted. But as you speak of invoke, it, it, it gives, I think, a whole new sense of hope and, 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 and idea and concept for the future. And so my question to you now is within that energy, within that spiritual, I don't know, for lack of a better term, nexus, um, do you see something that needs to be altered in our strategy? Or would you say that it's just essentially the same, we, we, the, the energy we need to devote is essentially the same energy that we've been devoting? I'm, I'm curious as to how, you know, um, that which you speak of can be applied into our struggle. Uh, well, thank you for that deep question, Craig. It's really good to see you and hear your voice. Um, you used a lot of we in your question, and I'm not sure who the we is. <laughs> um, I, I, go ahead. Tell me what the we is that you're talking about. Oh, that the things we have been doing, for example, who's the we? You're, you're muted, Craig. Let me say this. When I look at, you know, the work that's done, I don't do it. I don't look at it as me being in it by myself. Okay, so, I mean, in terms of broad-based types of things, uh, I'm often involved with coalitions, you know, um, oftentimes they have different agendas than mine, but at the same time, their goal is essentially, you know, consistent with what mine is. And so when I say we, I, I, I'm asking for, you know, really a broad and, and I, I don't you don't necessarily have to be as broad as I wish, but I'm looking for a broad sense that you know that can address uh, not just ideology, but what we can have in common, share in common, because we're not going to agree on everything, okay? But there's some things you know that we can agree on, you know, and and to that end, I'm looking specifically at a spirit from a spiritual point of view that we we identify with as to uh, how that strategy can be imposed based on the newness and and the fact that you know things are changing and they're in constant motion so I'm, I'm 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 hoping to more or less get you know from this uh not just for myself but for people who may agree with me um, how we can, you know, address some of these problems. Because we have some problems here <laughs> in Santa Monica. Since you know, we have some problems here. Uh, yeah. We have some huge problems here. Thank you. Okay. Well, I love that you use the word coalition. I, I really feel like um, I, don't, I don't expect to give anything particularly deep here as an answer. But in my own work here in Portland, I'm involved in a religious coalition, actually, of various religious institutions, churches and synagogues and uh, so forth, to work on land and housing issues. And what's good about being in coalition spiritually, and it is, it is self-consciously spiritual, um, is that you will have differences of opinion, of belief, and you can speak them with generosity of listening. And I, I feel like generosity of listening to those who, who are, are and could be our allies is extremely important as we 
work to find ways to turn this around, <laughs> you know, the, right. this culture and, and the violence inherent in it, both in our country and, and in the world. Thank you. Yeah, I, I appreciate that also. And I think in listening, we also sometimes realize that we didn't know everything, <laughs> right? Oh, thank yes. You. Yeah. I so, will thank you too. What? Okay. Let's go to Jean Gaska. Hi, Ethel. So nice to see you. Hi, Jean. I wanted to share something that I discovered this week. I, I tutor children and I have a new student who's in seventh grade. So that means she's about 13, 14. And she doesn't know her multiplication tables at all. I mean, past the threes, she stumbles, doesn't know them at all. And that means that math is very painful for her and very slow, very slow. So I've been struggling for about three weeks to figure out how to get her to, you know, we, we got, the mom got her flashcards and she will only take out the ones she knows to flip. She, she won't even touch the other, she can't do it. And I've, I don't want to embarrass her, you know, in our sessions together because they're in person. So, you know, my flipping the card and having to have her say, I don't know over and over is too painful for her. I finally came up with a solution and I'm waiting to see next week how it works. Um, actually, if every week I've asked her when she makes a mistake to just write it down and write the correct answer three times. And so she's keeping a notebook, but her answers, you know, she just has a few because she's picking only the ones she knows already. So last week I said, you know what? Making mistakes is so important. So here's what my challenge is to you. I would like you to learn these five, you know, the twos, the threes, the fives, the tens, and the nines for next week. But I really want you to delve into those, those other cards that are so challenging for you. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going, and she loves Starbucks. So I said, I have a Starbucks card for you. When you make 50 mistakes in your notebook, I'll give you the Starbucks card. And the first time I saw her light up, it's like, I could write down mistakes and get something for it. And the thing that, that came to me, I learned so much from tutoring students about myself, is that I don't reward myself for making mistakes. And yet, isn't that the way that we learn? So uh, Ethel, your, your idea about fresh start, your talk about fresh start, um, it just reminds me how we need to not only have gratitude for when we do things well and when things turn out, but when we don't do things well, because that leads us to how to do things better. Just wanted to share that. Thank you, Jean. Thank you so much. Uh, Chuck? Ethel, so good to see you. Uh, Oregon and, and, and here, you know, ge geographical points of reference or location. Uh, it feels like you never left. It feels like you are absolutely connected here. And I just want to say something about the connection to land. Louise's background in her picture is Slady Fork, West Virginia, where I was born. Man, I have never felt connected to anything more than Appalachia. And that part of the world, the Pocahontas County, the birthplace of rivers. I asked what Slady, Slady Fork of what? Well, it doesn't have a fork. It's not the fork of anything. It's just a fork. It's a, it's a stream. They call them streams, branches, creeks, runs, this and that. And some have names, people that rose run. Some name people name them. But if there's one thing I'm sure of, we never quite get away from where we've been. We take that with us. The land owns us. Uh, we don't own the land. And, and it, it lives with us daily. And I just wanted to thank you for being with us today. And uh, it's so good to, you know, so good to have you in my life. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Rachel? Um, Ethel, thank you so much for uh, doing this today. Um, and um, thank you, um, Jean, for, for that. Uh, <laughs> rewards for making mistakes 
um, I'm going to have to remember to reward myself <laughs> when I make mistakes uh, and not beat myself up over it. Um, I actually changed, uh, if you didn't notice from last Christmas Eve, I decided to do a different song other than the one that uh, I had been doing for, I think, three years previous because I was making mistakes in the song, I at least flubbed up once uh, all three of those years. And I was like, oh, let me try a different song. And you know what? I flubbed that too at one point. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, not, not beating ourselves up uh, when we make mistakes is, is definitely a, a, a lesson to be learned. Unfortunately, um, as a planet, we are not uh, we're not learning from our mistakes, and uh, um, you know, it, going back to kind of what, what Craig was talking about, um, you know, it just feels like to me that ultimate battle of souls, that ultimate battle of good and evil, um, and where, the, where the righteous, where, where, the, where the people claiming to be righteous are actually the people who are doing the most harm. And, um, you know, I just don't know, I'm still at a loss you know, as to how we see our way through uh, what some seers and psychics have seen um, where we should be coming through this into a uh, into the and I'm sure you all have heard of it uh, the, the thousand years of peace and um, you know I, I'm, I'm not I'm not seeing that piece at this at this moment but I, I guess uh, the other thing I can do is uh, keep the faith Keep putting out the the positive energy. Keep creating my my own reality field, and have that reality field link up with uh, with others of, of like of, of like souls to uh, to try to combat what's happening. Uh, but it's uh, it's it's just my heart aches a lot of times, and I just don't know what to do about it, except uh, try to keep on coming back to the church in Ocean Park. Well, we're glad that you do. We're very glad that you do. Um, thank you so much, Rachel. Uh, we have time for the two more that already have their hands up. That's Joseph and Maureen. Yes, um, about three days ago, I made a mistake during my work time at the hospital. I made a mistake and I entered the wrong room. I was not supposed to go into that patient room. I was supposed to go to go into another room, but I went into the wrong room by mistake. <laughs> and when I got into the room, it so happened that the patient who was in that room was reflecting on some religious and theological questions. And she said she was hoping that there might have been um, a priest or a chaplain or somebody to talk to. Mm -hmm. And I suddenly appeared, <laughs> but I was not supposed to be there <laughs> because it, I was there by mistake. So sometimes our quote unquote mistakes land us in the right place where we ought to have been. <laughs> And that patient was so enthused and so happy because um, all of a sudden the chaplain appeared and she was thinking of the same thing. <laughs> and I was there, was able to help her and to, to share and to help her to talk and, you know, to relieve some of her stress and answer some of her questions. And when I left, I said, what a, what a strange thing, <laughs> you know? So sometimes, um, I believe it is a greater spirit that guides us and directs us and motivates us. 
So I want to thank SL for today because, you know, I, I, I'm just filled with gratitude myself. When I, when I visit patients and I see their enthusiasm, I see their, their grit, I see their, 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 their life that is in them despite their physical conditions, which are sometimes extremely serious. And, and I could see them smiling and, and, sh and sharing. And, you know, I said, but if this was me, I would be the most miserable person on earth. But then they they fill me with such gratitude and 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 and, and joy that it is 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 just amazing. Thank you, thank you, Reverend Joseph. Uh, Maureen. Hi, hi, hi Ethel. <laughs> so good to see you. And we're heading up to Portland in a month, so we were hoping to to connect. Yeah. Um, the, you, you touched so beautifully on so many things. Just thank you, thank you, thank you. But the, the thing I want to pull out uh, that got my attention, because it's where my attention is right now, is grief. And um, I, I think it was Marshall Rosenberg who said, all violence is undigested grief. And, um, and what... Um, Craig had brought forward around coalition, you know, that we're not meant to hold these kinds of burdens by ourselves. And um, so um, I was on the Metro this week and I had was chatting with this young black man. And as he walked away, I just thought, oh my God, his mother's worried about whether he'll come home, you know, just because he's black out there in the world. and. Um, anyway, I, I just wondered if grief ritual or grief has been part of your anti-racism work. That's, that's my question. Cause it's so, the, the, the undigested grief I think is so intertwined with racism. Well, that's a great question, Maureen. Um, I can only talk to it personally. Um, I, I've really reckoned more in the last seven years, I'd say, with racism more deeply, let's put it that way, than I ever had before. And it has humbled me. And I realize that if I am not doing anti-racist work, I'm hurting my soul that I must do it um, because there is tremendous grief in knowing that on some, le on some level, the good life I enjoy has been at the expense of others over hundreds of years. And um, I'm not sure I expressed that very well, but it's just, it's necessary for my own sense of salvation of any kind. I must be making good trouble. <laughs> and uh, so in that sense, yes. Um, but you bring up a good question about, is it consciously and openly talked about in my anti-racism work? And I don't think it is as much as it should be. Because grief is the proper response. And then other responses after that. Reckoning and then, you know, recovering. So thank you for that question. Thank you so much, Ethel, and thank you so much, everyone. Uh, let's just, just take a stretch and breathe. And in addition to appreciating all of the, the learning and reflections today, I very much am appreciating seeing people come back together after not seeing each other for a long time. So it's wonderful 
Ethel to be with you and this community as they greet you <laughs> and to hear about the ways that you have uh, been wonderful as a part of this community for so many years. So let us sing together a song from our friend Pat Humphreys of Emma's Revolution. Going to keep on walking forward, never turning back, never turning back. We're going to keep on walking forward, keep on walking forward, keep on walking forward, never turning back. Never turning back. We're gonna keep on walking proudly. Keep on walking proudly. Keep on walking proudly. Never turning back. Never turning back. We're going to keep on singing loudly, keep on singing loudly, keep on singing loudly, never turning back, never turning back. We're gonna keep on loving boldly. Keep on loving boldly. Keep on loving boldly. Never turning back. Never turning back. We're going to reach across our borders, reach across our borders, reach across our borders, never turning back, never turning back. Now, some of you may know that after Pat Humphreys originally wrote this song, she probably had that thought, oh my, I have made a mistake and left out people for whom walking is not their primary way of getting around. And so she added this next verse. We're gonna keep on moving forward. Keep on moving forward. Keep on moving forward, never turning back, never turning back. Oh, we're never turning back, never turning back. Oh, we're never turning back. Never turning back. So we have birthdays for Ethel and Donia. Is there anybody else who has a birthday for us to celebrate? Hey yes. guys, would it be inappropriate to uh, wish Angela Davis a happy birthday? <laughs> sure. <laughs> we just had her at LMU about a week and a half ago. She is, she is incredible, and the students loved, you know, hearing more about her story. And, yeah, uh, I think that's fine. Uh, totally appropriate. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ethel. Happy birthday, dear Donia. Happy birthday, Angela Davis. Happy birthday to all of you. 
Wonderful. Now we have our last song. Another song Ethel brought us called The Tide is Rising. And it's written by Rabbi Shoshana Meyer Friedman. Put the words in the chat so you can join in. Tide is rising and so are we. Tide. The tide, let's see. The tide is rising and so are we. The tide is rising and so are we. The tide is rising and so are we. This is where we're called to be. This is where, where we're called to be. Thank you so much, Louise. It is time to release the directions. Spirits of the North, the East, the South, and the West, we again pray that we may be aligned with you so that your powers may flow through us and be expressed by us for the good of the earth and all living beings on it. We release you. Blessed be. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. And rejoice in the magic of the spirit. And now unmute yourself and we say together, carry on. Unmute yourself. Please chaotically do it. And we hold hands across the country. We hold hands to Oregon and down to Carlsbad and over to Connecticut, all, all over the place. And we say together, carry on. One, two, three. Carry on. 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 Carry on.